Hey, um, in this video I want to talk about two crimes, um, and um, just my thoughts on them. Obviously, uh, it makes me angry, but um, I'll try and make this without having a rant. I'll try and make it with clarity and so on. So the first thing is a, a brief reference to Alan Henning. Um, if you don't know, he was... Uh, a taxi driver, I believe, from Manchester. Um, oh, no, sorry, Blackpool, I think it was, but um, Blackburn, somewhere in the northwest. That's not really relevant. But um, he was a taxi driver, but he was also an aid worker. And uh, the troubling news that has just emerged within the last 24 hours that he has been beheaded by ISIS, by Islamic State. Um, of course, uh, a lot of Muslims have condemned this, a lot of human beings have condemned this generally. You know, decapitating someone is barbaric, as it is. But when the person is someone who is devoting their life to trying to help others, it makes it all the more, in my view, evil. I do think it is evil. And um, I could say, like, they're barbarians and all the rest of it, but that, you know, it's sort of stating the obvious. There isn't much more that I can say than what I've already said in previous videos about similar such cases. But it just shows how depraved these people are. I mean, this was a man who had no military connections, absolutely nothing that they could... Not that there'd be any excuse anyway, but... It sickens me. But what also frustrates me is that even now there are people who insist on blaming everything on the West, and they cannot just bring themselves to condemn this evil organisation. Whatever you think is the root cause, at least condemn what ISIS are doing. So I have no patience with people who want to come out with their conspiracy theories, and they just can't bring themselves to condemn what any decent human being should condemn. For my part, um, like I said before, I don't think airstrikes alone are the answer. Obviously that can't be the answer. But I don't see any other way. Of course this should be um, a drive against our propaganda. Um, we should be looking at young Muslims who might be being brainwashed by this ideology. Look at methods to try and get over that. Um, airstrikes alone can't be the answer. That's obvious. Um, but it's very, very difficult to know what other alternative there is. Appeasement, doing nothing and just hoping to contain them. I can't see that working. Because this organisation seems to be spreading like wildfire, and I, I don't think a containment approach would work, whilst it would have good intentions. The truth is, there are no easy answers. That is the simple truth. But there's another thing I want to talk about, and because of the time frame, um, I'll, I'll get straight to it. Um, and this was a domestic crime. Man stabbed after confronting the group. Uh, I'll just read out the report, it's not too long. A man has been stabbed 15 times after remonstrating with a group who were throwing stones at a house. A number of people were standing outside a house on Kingfisher Drive in Berry when they started to throw stones at the window at around half 1am today, Greater Manchester Police said. A 22-year-old man walked outside and asked him to stop before he was hit with a stick, a police spokesman said. He returned to the house but stones were still being thrown. He walked back outside to remonstrate with them and give, gave chase. When they reached a footpath at the back of Kingfisher Drive, the group turned on him and he was stabbed 15 times in the body and head. The offenders ran off before police were called. The man is in serious but stable condition in hospital. Two 15-year-old boys, a 17-year-old boy and an 18-year-old man have been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and remain in custody for questioning, the spokesman said. Detective Sergeant Lawrence Dixon said when the man confronted the group and gave chase he was set upon well that's just repeating what I've already said due to the severity of this attack we are treating it as attempted murder and I would appeal to anyone who may have witnessed the incident to contact us although we have made arrests we're still investigating and asking for information obviously the local community will be deeply upset by what has happened but we have stepped up patrols in the area and are dedicated to finding out who is responsible anyone with information is asked to phone police on 101 or the independent charity Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111. I'll repeat that. 
Um, I don't work for the police, but if you do know anything, please, please, please contact one of those numbers. You know, that young man has lost, potentially he could lose his life. I shouldn't say he's lost his life, he's in critical condition, but either way it's a life-changing event. Um, just do the right thing. If you know anything, you can call Crime Stoppers anonymously. If you're worried about vigilanteism, it's anonymous. Please just do the right thing and phone them. Um, but now, just for, for my thoughts on it, this is the sort of crime that really disturbs me, um, particularly because it's so utterly senseless. It's so savage, and I just hope the pack of worthless cards that done this um, are shitting themselves right now with fear from years behind bars and I hope that they are charged I hope that when it comes to trial they are found guilty and I hope they are put behind bars for a very very long time because a society that permits this sort of shit to happen is not a civilized society and when I say permits it to happen I'm talking about this sort of crime not resulting in justice now, Norway or Sweden, these scumbags would be uh, not facing jail at all, because they're underage. And I, I've mentioned before how perverse I think their system is, and I stand by that. If it offends people tough, I'm offended by lack of justice. And I know it's not relevant to this case, but I'm just saying it from a perspective of... I'm sure similar things happen in those countries occasionally. Maybe not as much, but... This really is a sort of crime that no one can rationally argue that these people don't deserve to be behind bars for years. There are some on the loony left, and there are the likes of the Hard League for Penal Reform, who would be hard pushed to um, just recognise that this is a clear-cut case of people that just belong behind bars 15 times. 15 times. This wasn't an accident. This wasn't like they panicked. Uh, well, in my opinion, there's no such thing as someone being stabbed by accident. Fifteen times. And I just hope these worthless little rats, apologies to rats, are hunted down and caged. And I'm sorry to use tabloid language, but I I have very strong views on this, because I spent two years in an inner city area putting up with gangs. You You cannot... You cannot morally try to make excuses for these people. I don't give a shit if they're from a tough background. I don't care what excuses you come out with. All I know is that a young, brave young man who tried doing the right thing is now on life support. This is sickening. And sadly there's been so many cases like this in this country. Um, I'm not saying a tough sentence would necessarily be a deterrent for other scumbags. But it isn't just about deterrent, and it isn't just about reducing crime. It's also about what is right. And what is right in this case is the people responsible for this should absolutely receive a very, very long custodial sentence. There is no rational argument. I, I, I won't buy any crap about, oh, well, they're under 18, so they don't have responsibility. 16 and 17-year-olds know that stabbing someone is morally wrong. I don't, I don't accept anyone saying otherwise. I don't accept it. This is one of those things I have cast iron conviction on. They should be in jail. They should absolutely be in jail. It's not about revenge. It's about justice. It's about what is right and wrong. So when I hear, um, you know, you get people who work with young offenders like social workers and so on, and I appreciate that they're looking at a perspective, they're working with an angle, they, they see the background. Okay, I get it. But I hope they're open-minded and decent enough to recognise in these sort of cases they should absolutely have justice thrown at them. And I actually would go as far as to say anyone who says otherwise, anyone who tries to argue that these people don't belong in jail, I would say their, their position is morally questionable. How can you rationally argue that? Because in my view that is just throwing insults at the victim. 
And it's why I find the Scandinavian system so perverse. And I know it's not relevant to this specific case, but Britain isn't a great deal better. We still have far too many lenient sentences, not as bad as Norway or Sweden, but still too many cases resulting in sentences that simply don't match the crime. Anything less than 10 years for the filth responsible for this is not right. It, in my view, it should be an absolute minimum of 10 years. Because if they're prepared to do this over someone remonstrating with them, this wasn't a case of uh, self-defence or fighting for their lives. This was a case of a pack of cowardly, worthless little thugs who stabbed a young man because they didn't like um, the fact that he stood up to them. So in my opinion, anything less than 10 years isn't justified. 10 years minimum. And when you get um, the loony left and the likes of the hard league saying things that there's too many people in jail, I would say, well look, look at the nature of the crimes. These sort of crimes must result in jail. And it isn't about reducing crime levels, it's about what is right. And I'll conclude with that. It's not about tabloid justice. It's not about getting revenge. It is simply about what is right. And if you think that this sort of crime shouldn't result in a harsh penalty, I would suggest you've got something seriously wrong with you.